there does seem to be a distinction between how people are treating the genocide or alleged genocide in Palestine versus other genocides that are happening around the world or have happened in recent Listen, times. Every generation has its cause, okay? The generation, my generation was Vietnam. The generation after that was South Africa. Every generation has its cause. And there are complex reasons why a particular case where there are other instances of it simultaneously happening, why that particular case seizes the imagination of a generation. And I think that's, it's a very hard question to answer why that happens. Why was South Africa the cause of the 1980s? Why was Vietnam the cause of the 1970s and 60s? Why? You can't really explain that. You know, they used to say, actually, the, the standard of living in South Africa of blacks was higher than many other countries in South Africa, in uh, Africa. So why are you picking on us? And the South Africans say, you think our regime is uh, uh, undemocratic? What about Eastern Europe? Why aren't you picking on Hungary or Romania? Why are, you, why are you focusing on us? And there is some truth to all of those claims. I'm never going to deny that. And I can't explain why I think Gaza has become a kind of metaphor uh, for your gen. Well, I don't know how old you are, but for the 20 and 30 year olds, it's become a metaphor. It's become a metaphor for a powerless, stateless, uh, impoverished community that's being battered, battered by an overwhelming external force. And for young people, that feels a lot like them. Mm -hmm. A lot of young people feel they're being battered by this system. Mm -hmm. That every young person I meet, you know, my day, a job meant something very, very simple. A job meant 40 hours a week, Saturday and Sunday off, three, two to three weeks of vacation a year, uh, retirement and uh, pension and so forth. That was a job. Anything short of that, we didn't call that a job. It was something else, but it wasn't a job. A job meant something very narrow. I never meet a young person now who has a 40-hour a week job. Everybody has gigs. Oh, I do this and I do that and I do that, or I'm between jobs. Uh, so that generation, uh, the millennial generation and thereafter, uh, they feel like they're being battered by this system. And Gaza is a paradigmatic case. Mm -hmm. Two and a half million, 2.3 million people sealed in this concentration camp, born into it, not able to live it, left there to just languish and die. And for a lot of young people, languish and die is like, <laughs> sort of like where they are. Mm -hmm. They're left to languish and die. So it's not entirely surprising to me that they seized on Gaza, not because of Israel, let alone because it's Jewish, but because it's Gaza. It's two and a half, 2.3 million people, half of them children, children. And the half born into that God-forsaken place. They were born into it. And they can't leave it. It's sealed. It's sealed shut. Hermetically sealed. They don't even, Israel doesn't even let out people who have medical conditions that could be treated in other hospitals. It won't let them go. You're just here to die. We don't want you to get better. We want you to die. That's a fact. They want them to die. They want what happened to our Native Americans to die out. I mean, that's a harsh thing to say, but I think it was true of lost Americans. We wanted the native population to die out. That's what we wanted. That was the fate that was sealed for them, to put them off in these reservations where eventually they would just disappear and die out. And I think that's Israel. And so I think the identity, the identification with Gaza has a lot more to do with Gaza than it has to do with Israel. Mm -hmm. It's how Gaza is presented. It's a metaphor for 
a large part of the a large part of the population in this country, as I said, the millennial generation. So I, I don't think it has. Actually, you no. Know, of course, there are a handful of crazies and wackos and anti-Semites. I know that, but most of them, I meet them. I find this reading of the general attitude toward the situation as being more based on an identification with the oppressed and being obsessed, upset with the oppressor-oppressed relationship or even what's perceived as the colonist-colonized relationship yes. as actually being more plausible than the anti- Yeah, I think that's an important point. I think that's an important point. That the younger generation was reared on this whole notion of settler colonialism and all of these frameworks or paradigms and Israel Palestine fits easily into that framework. I think that's absolutely correct. <laughs>